So what we have here, some rusty box sides on the Sonoma pickup truck, nothing unusual. And some cab corners. As you can see here, already got started. So what we did here, we cut out the rusty metal. These are the rusty panels. Now these are for a Sonoma S10, but this is a Z72 four door. So the problem with the Z72 four doors, they don't or Z70. What is it? Okay, it's a ZRS, so it's a four-door Sonoma. The problem is they don't make a patch panel for these trucks. Luckily, this one here is only gone, was only gone through here. So what we did was we cut down the panel and made it fit. So we're going to weld this up solid and clean it up, put some seam sealer on it, put the put the box side back on it. Bob's your uncle. A little bit of finishing to do, but this is where we're at. So that be that. So I'm gonna finish this up. And the only area we really have to be concerned about finishing is right here and right here. There was a little bit of work done on this truck before, so there was a couple of bubbles here, but the metal is clean underneath, so it, uh, the filler must have failed. But So we'll clean this up, hold it up solid, put some paint on it, and put some rocker panels on, or uh, cab corners on it so so we'll clean this up cut out the rusty metal we've got some replacement cab corners as well so here's the panels here's the replacement cab corners this one is for an extended cab but I can cut it down and use what I need it was the same price as this one. They had it in stock, so I took it. And that be that. So, rust repair on a Sonoma four door, which has the incredibly hard to find box. So, check back in a little bit. All sealed up. Ready to start finishing. So, onward. So, here we are. We're fixing up the cab corner on the Sonoma. A little rusty. And here's what happens they start rusting from the inside. Ew. And once this rust starts piling up like this, it's like a sponge. Collects water. This is why undercoating is so important. When you buy something new, drill it out, get it undercoated. It's important that whoever's undercoating gets in areas like this here. So it has to be drilled. It's the only way you can get the undercoating in places like this to prevent this from happening but now that we have it we got to fix it so we have a cab corner and I cut out the the most rusty metal the cab corner would go up to here but there's no need of replacing good metal so I'm just capping it where it's bad so I'll uh update when the, the piece is in. In carpentry they say measure twice, cut once. Well in body work 
we measure twice but we cut twice we want to make sure that we have enough metal to cover the hole that we're we're filling so it's always better to leave some excess and trim it back and that way there you know you're not going to if you try to make it too close on the first cut what can happen is you'll have a gap and gaps are no good so leave a little extra and trim it twice make sure that it fits perfect and uh, weld it on off the trimming so when you're fitting a panel you want to make sure that it fits that's the first and most important step so this one fits nice and when you're welding you start in the center here so you you get it tight there you weld it in the center you get it tight here you weld it in the center you work your way out and then once you got it tight to the corner here you start and you weld the center there and work your way out now this part here that's going to be exposed to the outside where it's going to be finished is is going to be welded in solid in here it's going to be spot welded and back here it will be spot welded as well and this will be finished with seam sealer and this will be finished with body filler and uh, get it ready for paint so this is the next step so next time you see it it'll be tagged in The most important part of this process is to keep the metal tight. You want the metal to be tight to the body as close as you can to avoid knobs and goobs and just dirty welds. So keep the metal tight. Clean up the welds after it's done with a grind. Go over any spots that need to be redone. And then your cab corner is on. So the next step, take your angle grinder with a backing pad and I think this is 80 grit. Clean up your welds before you weld it in solid. Now some people would just fill this and it would probably hold up personally I like to weld in any outside edges that are exposed to the elements weld it up solid and then you can clean it back up and there's less chances of breaking of it breaking out now uh, it's an old truck it's rusty this isn't gonna last forever it could last a long time if it's kept under coated but the next step is to fill in the gaps so with MIG welding, the point is don't weld any more than an inch at a time. The heat will pull us in, push it out. So ideally, you want to keep, keep the heat as low as possible. So fill in the gaps, weld it in, and grind it off, and it'll look like it's a piece of the truck. As you can see here, there's a pinhole there and a pinhole there. So that's why we grind it off and go back and check. Fill in them pinholes and um, we'll have a nice solid patch. So here we are. Went over the, the lines there. Next is to fill up fill the welds in here and 
you want to do this with the lowest heat possible. So this is the MIG welder that I'm using. It's a MIG Pack 180. Bought it from Canadian Tar. It's more of a handyman unit than something you'd say from a pickup from a from a welding supply outlet. But here's settings I have it on right now. Set it on A for the lowest heat. And I have it on three for wire speed. Wire speed and heat. It should sound like eggs frying in the pan when when it's working great. So this is just my uh, little MIG pack. Yes, there's better welders out there, but it's an old truck, and this is a hobby for me. It's I'm not making a living at it anymore, so it it does nice work, and it's a uh, it's good enough so in for the 600 Canadian dollars that I paid for it it, it was a very good unit and, uh, and it does the job so back to welding at this point we're welded up got a good gap most of the welds are closed up so I just ground it off to check any spots that needed to be fixed up like this one here and this one here so we'll put some welds on that and uh, grind that off and uh, this is ready for f finishing So here we are, cab corners welded on, repair panels welded on, trimmed up, so uh, that can actually get some paint on it and put the panel, put the trim panel back on, or the, the molding. And uh, it's going back together. All right, weld up the other side, same thing, cut, weld, and repeat. Side two, all right, so this side's just a tad worse than the other side. So we're going to do the same process though, we're going to cut this metal out, then we're going to take the new metal, get it fit, and uh, do the same thing as you can see this cab corner is the same way rust it out just gonna be a big sponge of rust in there and when you see this kind of bubbling that's what you get it's a hole so that needs to be cut out, fixed, and repaired. Back to work. Crude, yet effective. Alright, you might be asked, why would I go through all this trouble? Well, trucks, a new truck is bloody expensive. So if you can learn how to do this, get some practice on your own rig, there's plenty of money to be made doing this work exactly because nobody really wants to do it and it's not hard so it takes a little investment you gotta learn how to get good at it so work on your own before you tackle anybody else's job because when you start charging people to do something their expectations and your expectations might be totally different so until you're comfortable enough being able to deliver something to somebody else's expectations just practice on your own Buy an old car, fix it up, sell it. If somebody wants to buy it, they see what they're getting. Anyways. So before you fit your metal, make sure that it's clean. Can't have good welds if you're welding paint. 
and if you can see what's going on here, I don't know if you can see this line, but this is the line where the molding goes to, and this is all covered. So luckily for me, that I can weld this on, seam seal it, and paint it, and put put the molding back on, or the flare, put the flare back on, and when I paint the side of it, I can paint the flare with the outside of it. The inside will already have paint on it. And uh, it'll make it much easier. Once once it's painted, you can go out the door. So, next step, trim the patch. So this is the replacement panel. When installing a replacement panel, you want to only put in what you need. You don't want to cut out good metal. So, a little tip for cutting the metal is give yourself a guideline where you want to cut the metal out. out at. I use masking tape so you can see this is the part I'll be keeping. Now, with this particular truck, it's a Sonoma four door. So, this particular box that's on this truck, they don't make a repair panel for it. So if the box was any worse than it was, I would have to put this in in two pieces. So if I had to use this part up here, I would have to trim this out, lay this above, and weld it in. Then weld, weld it onto the truck. So, thankfully I don't have to do that. So it's just a repair under... The, to basically just to have good metal to hold uh, the flares on so so that's a, a tip or a hack or a trick but the biggest thing with putting repair panels on is use as little of it as you possibly can so back to what I was saying since you can't get a, a repair panel for a Sonoma four-door if the box was worse and you needed more metal what you'd have to do is cut that piece off and weld it to weld it to the rest and make it make it fit nice and put it on but thankfully I only need this so that's uh, what I'm going to use and this is a good piece of sheet metal so you know it's 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 pressed it's got curves built into it you never know when it's going to come in handy for another project so you just tuck it aside and then use it whenever so that's that uh oh we're a little short getting back to my point about saving materials from other jobs because this side the panel is only so big and it only fits cover so much I have a missing piece but luckily I saved this sheet of metal from a job that I trimmed off earlier it already has the curve built into it so I'll just cut a piece of that off put it in Bob's your uncle at least Bob was my uncle. So I trimmed the metal down. So the next step is, see the first step was having the right line, keeping the right contour. The next step is to make this metal the shape of what's underneath it. So what I generally do is I will take a chisel to the back side of the sheet metal and I will put a bend in it. That way there it naturally wants to take the same contour as the as the piece of metal that was there before. So I'm gonna give that a couple of taps with the chisel, trim it down some more, and I'll show you the end results. So again, what you see here, use some tape get a line put the chisel on it 
So when you tap it, this side will actually come up, which will uh, put a radius curve in. So wasn't planning on showing this today, but it's a bonus. As you can see, there's a radius curve in, in it now. So it deflects inward, takes the shape of the panel. The biggest thing when you're making a patch is you want it to fit before you start welding because if it doesn't fit when you when you start welding it definitely ain't going to fit after you're finished welding because it's going to go to hell so i'm going to finish putting a little curve in this trim it down a little more and set it in place so what we have here we have the metal all loosely fit clamped on you can see the the ridge that was put in the indentation the important reason to do that is so that it, it all fits together before you start welding. So now that it's loosely fit, I'm going to clean up this edge. As you can see here, by keeping the repair small, you could actually not even have to get involved with painting at all. You, get some paint and put from a spray bomb and finish it off that way if you uh, were short on some money you need to get it fixed but you know this is a solid repair so it's all spot welded in I'll take the time and clean it get it seam sealed and that box I can go back on and I'm not sure if I'm gonna get involved in painting the whole side or not but we'll uh, we'll see how small I can keep it and if it's covered up then this side might not even need to get painted so next part of the job put a cap corner in it So, panel's welded on, seam is sealed, so this uh, wheel flare can go back on. So, we'll put some paint under here, color match it, and uh, fix, the, fix the cab corner, as I stated earlier. So. On to that. So we cut the rust out, and what we found is the cause of a lot of rot in GM vehicles the sponge. Now, this sponge, before we do any welding, it's going to have to be removed as far as I can reach. Hopefully, get it removed up to there. So, when the heat travels, the heat will travel to about this area. But the, what, the reason why I mention it is this is extremely dangerous. Bef, before you start, when you're welding this, make sure that you have two hours to keep an eye on, on things because this could smolder, catch on fire. If you see any smoke rolling out of a joint or a seam, drill a hole, get some water on it. Make sure that uh, you don't have any fire starting because you could lose your garage, your shop, a customer's vehicle. So this has to be removed and I'll put the patch in. But since I'm not going to be in here for two hours, I'm going to start this in the morning. All right. 